Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video we're going to continue our discussion on absolute value by looking at how you graph absolute value functions. We'll also then use that new knowledge of graphing absolute value functions to look at absolute value equations and inequalities in a new light and kind of look at another way that you can interpret and solve those types of problems that we have previously seen in my videos. Okay, let's take a look at the absolute value function. Uh, we're gonna begin with what we call the parent function. And the parent function is just simply the most basic absolute value function that I can give you. So we're just gonna look at the absolute value of x. Uh, later on, we will be adding and subtracting numbers, we'll be multiplying by numbers, things will be positive or negative. But for now, just very simply, what does the absolute value of x look like? and then we'll learn how to make all those modifications to that. And I like to kind of explore um, new functions with just a numerical investigation. I wanna make just a table of values and we're gonna do this a little bit through the first half of this video uh, and then we'll learn kind of the, the tricks and the shortcuts to skip the numerical um, view of the graph. So a standard table of values for, for a lot of functions when you're just beginning, I think is just to look at um, positive two to negative two, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the x in the function with these numbers here. So, you know, start with the first one. What is the absolute value of two? It's equal to two. What is the absolute value of one? It's equal to one. Absolute value of zero, so on, is zero. Uh, but then when we get to the absolute value of these negative numbers, we know that absolute value is distance and distance is positive. So absolute value of negative one is just positive one. Absolute value of negative two is positive two. So we get a table of values that then plots on the graph like this. We have the two, two, we have one, one, we have zero, zero, we have negative one, one, and negative two, two. And what happens is this table of values creates a graph that is V-shaped. Okay, all absolute value is going to be v-shaped okay now i want to wrap up this parent function slide by talking about domain and range because that's something i'm going to ask and we're going to look at that within this video and assignments that uh, that go into this uh, domain recall that domain is x values and range are y values so when i look at this graph you know, it goes to the right forever, it goes to the left forever, it spans the entire x-axis. The domain is gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity. Every x value is covered, okay? Uh, the range, on the other hand, is different. Um, notice that in this graph, there are no points down here, right? There are no points in this negative area of our graph. Um, all the points live up here in the positive y values. They also include zero right there. So our range is gonna start at zero and then go up to include all the positive values from there. All right, there's our pair function for absolute value. Uh, the big takeaway here is that absolute value are V-shaped graphs, okay? Um, the domain for all absolute values, and I didn't say this, maybe we should, is always gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity because they're always gonna be V-shaped graphs that span the whole x-axis. The range, though, is gonna change depending on what the graph looks like. All right, let's start le learning uh, maybe some shortcuts that we can take to graphing all absolute value graphs. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is horizontal translation. Horizontal is left and right. 
So what we're gonna talk about is how do you take this absolute value graph? This is the same one that we just graphed on the previous slide. This is just your basic absolute value of X. And how do you like pick it up and move it to the left and how do you move it to the right, okay? And so I've got a couple of different functions here to explore this. We've got absolute value X plus three and absolute value of X minus two. So we're adding a number or we're subtracting a number from inside the absolute value bars, okay? Let's go ahead and explore this with a table of values. For this one here, I'm gonna just do my standard positive two to negative two. Um, looks like I need my table to be just a little bit longer. So let's just extend this down a little bit. All right, so if I put two into X, that gives me two plus three. The absolute value of two plus three is five. If I put one in for X, I have one plus three, which is four. If I put zero in, I have zero plus three, which is three. Negative one plus three is two. And then we have negative two plus three, which is one. Um, Let's go ahead and plot those points. So I've got two, one. Wait, no, two is at five. Two, five. I have one, four, zero, three, negative one, two, negative two, one. Now, I know that I should see a V shape. I don't see a V yet. I just see these points that are in a straight line. So I actually want some more points here. Uh, let's try negative three and negative four. Negative three plus three is zero. And negative four plus three is negative one, but the absolute value of negative one is one. So there it is. I now have seen the turn back here on the left-hand side. And so I've got my V shape figured out. Okay, so there's my absolute value of x plus three. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Absolute value of x minus two. I'll start with my same five points. Uh, so start with two right here. Two minus two is zero. One minus two is negative one, but the absolute value becomes one. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. That becomes 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, which becomes 3. And negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. That becomes 4. So let's see. We got 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. Oh, I went the wrong way there. 1, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 2, 4. Since I plotted this point right there at three, let's go ahead and do that. Three minus two is one. So that was in the right spot. And there we've got our V shape. Right down there to two and then up the other side. Okay, so you can see we've got the same exact V shape that our parent function illustrates, but we've got it shifted to the left, we've got it shifted to the right. So how do we do that shifting to the, to the left? You can see that um, when we added a number, it moved the graph to the left. And it moved the graph to the left that amount. When we subtracted a number, it moved the graph to the right. So those two characteristics are always gonna be true for adding or subtracting numbers it's just going to move as far as the number is that you add or subtract. All right, next let's look at vertical translation. Verticals up and down. So how do we take this absolute value V shape and how do we move it up? How do we move it down? So I've got a couple of functions here to explore that. Uh, notice we're doing the same sort of um, addition and subtraction. Here I've got minus a number. Here I've got plus a number. Uh, the difference, though, is where that number is located, okay? Um, 
On the previous slide, the number was on the inside of the absolute value bars. Now it's going to be outside the absolute value bars. So let's see what that does. Uh, if I take my table of values, we're going to go 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. So here when we plug these in, we're going to do the absolute value first. So absolute value of 2 is 2, and then plus 3 is 5. Um, Next we have absolute value of one, which is one, plus three is four. Zero is zero, then plus three is three. Negative one, absolute value is positive one, plus three is four. And negative two is two, plus three is five. So our points are at two, five, one, four, zero, three, negative one, four, and negative two, five. So we can see the V shape. It's got the exact same shape in that it's positive one slope that direction. It's got a negative one slope this direction. The only difference is the V did not start right here at the origin. It started three units up. So what happened is adding three just moved the graph up three units, okay? Now, as you can reason from this then, if I subtract a number, it's gonna have the effect of moving the graph down that many units, okay? Let's go ahead and do this one without the table. If you want the table, you can go ahead and make one. Um, but if I take this zero, zero point and I move it down four units to zero, negative four, and then I'm gonna take this one, one point and move it one, two, three, four down. I can take this point and move it one, two, three, four down. Um, that gets me one side of the V shape. I'll do the same thing on this side. Could also just notice that it's the same positive one slope and negative one slope. And that's it. Okay, so now we have the means to move the graph in a vertical direction. Uh, from the last slide, we have the means to move the graph in a horizontal direction. So now we can place this absolute value V-shape anywhere that we want on our coordinate plane. We have the, the, the means to do that. All right, we're going to do uh, maybe one more thing, uh, maybe a couple more things to this, actually. Okay, so we know how to move the graph around. Um, now let's take a look at how we can change the V-shape um, and we're going to make it more narrow and we're going to make it more wide, okay? Um, so we're going to essentially, we're going to just change the slope of the V. We're going to change the slope of these two branches is what's going to happen, okay? Uh, so let's explore uh, this first one. We have three times the absolute value of X. I'm going to make the same table of values. So if I put two in, the absolute value is two, and then I multiply that by three and I get six. If I put one in for x, the absolute value is one times three is three. Put zero in for x, that's zero times three is zero. Negative one becomes positive one, so multiply by three, and negative two becomes positive two, times by three gives me six. So. Uh, notice we still have the same zero, zero points, so we're starting right there. We've got one, three. We've got two, six. We've got negative one, three. We have negative two, six. We have a V shape, which we should have a V shape. It's absolute value. We just have a skinnier V shape. Um, well, what it turns out is that the number here is just simply the slope plus minus of the two sides of the branches, right? So we're going from this zero, zero point, we're going up one, two, three over one. One, two, three over one. So that's a positive three slope. We're also going one, two, three, left one. One, two, three, left one. That's a negative three slope. Um, so stretching the graph, yes, right? We took this point, which was at one, and we moved it up to three. 
So we did stretch it taller, but essentially all this number is is just the slope, okay? Uh, for absolute value, that's the easiest way to think about it is it's just simply slope. So let's go faster than on this next one. If that's all this number is, is it, this is just gonna be a positive one half slope and a negative one half slope, it's real easy to graph. We're gonna start at the origin. We're gonna go up one over two, up one over two, etc. And we're gonna go in the negative direction as well. Okay, so there's our half absolute value of x. So we now have the means to not only move a graph around, but we have the means to make this V-shape skinnier or, or wider. Okay, based on changing the slope of the branches of the two sides of the V. All right, one more thing to do, and then we're gonna put it all together. Okay, last thing to talk about, it's a very common thing that happens, is how you take a graph and you reflect it, you flip it upside down. Notice all the absolute values so far have all been pointing up, all right? Uh, but it's possible for it to go down instead. So we're gonna talk about how we do that. To make a vertical reflection, all you simply need is this number to be negative. Okay, watch what happens when I make some points in this table. Um, if I put two in for x, the absolute value of two is two, but then I multiply by negative two and I get negative four. If I put one in for x, we get one, Multiply by two, we get negative two. Uh, zero, of course, times anything is still zero. So we get points that start to look like this. We've got the zero, zero. We have one, negative two. We have two, negative four. So we've got that. Um, if I give you a negative number here, negative one absolute values to one times negative two is negative two. We get that point. Um, it's the same slope interpretation. You know, here's our negative two slope. We need a positive two slope here. So I can just keep sloping two over one. And there's my graph, okay? Uh, so interpret the, the number here as slope. If you want our stretch or shrink number, negative just flips that graph and makes it go in a downward direction is simply all. Okay, time to put everything together. We are asked to graph the function and we're gonna state the domain and the range. All right, so looking at this absolute value of x, uh, I've got this minus four here and this minus two. So the questions really are just what do those numbers do to the appearance of this absolute value graph? Well, I know from the first slide that if I subtract a number and it's on the inside of the absolute value bars, that it's gonna move the graph to the right. Okay, so this graph needs to go right four units. And I know from the second slide, when we talked about vertical translation, that this minus two is gonna move the graph down two units, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just begin by taking my zero, zero point, and I'm gonna move it right four down two. Okay, that's my first point. It's called the vertex. So I'm simply, simply just moving the vertex. Now, once I've moved the vertex, I'm just gonna look at the slope, right? This is a one X, uh, or there's a one right here, if you will. So my slope is just gonna be positive one and negative one. And you can fill up as many points as you want on this graph, okay? So there's my V-shape, just simply from here, I went four left, down two, and then go from there. Now, domain and range, okay? Domain, remember from the first slide, from the parent function, uh, this graph goes left and right forever. It never stops going left and right. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity every absolute value function will have that domain without fail, okay? The range 
is impacted on how much up and down you went, okay? Uh, this graph doesn't start at zero. This graph starts right here at negative two. And then from negative two, it goes up, okay? So negative two is the lowest number on the graph. So I'm gonna start at negative two, and then it goes up from there. And it doesn't stop going up, it keeps going up forever. So negative two to infinity is our range. Okay, another problem with the same directions, we wanna graph the function, state the domain and range. So first thing I see when I look at this is this plus three is gonna move the graph up three. Uh, there's nothing added or subtracted here that's gonna move it left or right. So it's just gonna go up three. I'm happy to go ahead and put that point there. Now, I've got this negative two. That does two things. One, it's gonna make it open down, right? The negative does that. I'm gonna have a V shape going down, okay? Also, the slope is gonna be positive and negative two in a downward direction. So, as I graph this, I'm just simply gonna go two over one. 2 over 1, 2 over 1, the same thing in the opposite direction. You can fill up the entire graph with points if you want. I think at least 5 to 7 points would be good. Okay, so there it is. And, and I skipped all of the table of values, right? Picking those, those x numbers to plug in and do that work. If I just know how these numbers affect the appearance of the graph, I can skip all that. And that's a, that's a, a big time saver for me. Um, next, domain and range. So domain of this function, like all absolute value functions, is negative to positive infinity. Range. So here I'm looking y values. Um, this graph, it keeps going down forever. So the lowest point on the graph is negative infinity. Now this graph does have a high point right here, also illustrated right here. There's a high point of three on the graph where it doesn't go above that. So that has to be the cap of my range, negative infinity to positive three. Okay, one more to graph and state the domain and range. Uh, so let's look at everything that we see here. I see this plus two. This plus two is gonna move the graph left two. This minus four is gonna move it down four. And this one third is going to make the slope plus and minus one third. Uh, there's no negative, so it's not gonna go down. It is gonna open up, um, but this is gonna be the slope of my branches. So let's do this all without a table. Uh, first point is left two and down four. And then the slope, uh, opening up, right? So I've gotta go up one, right three. Up one, right three. I think the next one goes off the graph, so I'm gonna stop there. And to the left, up one, left three. I think the next one is off the graph, so I'll just do those points there. All right, so there's my V shape. Uh, the domain of this function is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range starting with the lowest point, the lowest point is right here at negative four. The range is the highest point and this graph just keeps going up. So the highest point is positive infinity. All right, a couple of videos ago, we talked about how to solve absolute value equations. And we did all that void of looking at the equation on a graph. And what I wanna do uh, now to finish this video is I wanna look at these on a graph and show you kind of how we can physically interpret um, the equations that we started with solving. Um, so an equation has two sides, right? We have a left and a right-hand side. I'm not gonna do any manipulating at all. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to graph this side. You know, so I might graph then f of x equals absolute value x minus two minus three. And then we're gonna graph this side as well. 
uh, I can change the name, we can call it g of x equals two, okay? So we're just gonna graph both these functions. First one, uh, that's a V-shaped graph that goes right two and down three. So two and three, it has a slope of one. So it's gonna look like this. And then same thing on the other side. And you can do as many points as you need, like so. Okay, now I wanna graph the other function. So that's just two. Two is just simply a horizontal line at two, like so, okay? When I am solving this equation, what I wanna know is where does this equal this, right? Where does this equal this or this equal this? I wanna know where does the f of x equal the g of x. Where do the graphs intersect? The graphs intersect right here and right here. That corresponds to seven and negative three. So if I am solving this equation, the solutions to this equation are x equals negative three and x equals seven. Without the algebra, just by looking at the graph. All right, in my last videos in this unit, we talked about absolute value inequalities. Let's go ahead and look at what an inequality might look like on a graph. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go a little bit faster though. Uh, I'm gonna graph this side right here. So that's gonna go right four up two. So right there. And then I wanna slope it positive one and negative one. Okay, so everything we learned about graphing the absolute value functions, we are utilizing that right now. So there's the first one. Next, I'm gonna graph seven. Seven is just a horizontal line right there. Okay, now what I want to know is where is the V shape less than seven. In other words, where is uh, the absolute value graph below seven, All right? And so it's less than seven everywhere here. Drop that down to the X axis. Open circles because there's no equal to, and everywhere between. The x-axis is simply your number line that we were using in the last uh, set of videos when we talked about absolute value inequalities. So my solution, it's a less than, that's an and statement, that's a between two numbers, right? My solution is everything between negative one and nine. Okay, one more absolute value inequality. Let's just begin by graphing the left side and the right side. So uh, minus one, minus three is gonna go to the right one and down three. It's got a positive one slope going to the right. It's got a negative one slope going to the left. Okay, next we're gonna graph two, the other side of the equation. So two right here, okay, like so. Now look at how easy this is. What I wanna know is where is the absolute value greater than or above two? Well, it's greater than two out here and out here. Now uh, there's also an equal to two. It's equal to two right where they cross. Now drop that shading down here to the x-axis. And we get our compound shading that we expect. Our shading is everything from negative infinity to negative four. 
negative four needs to be inclusive because it's equal to, and then we pick it up again at six, also inclusive to infinity. Okay, that's it. I know this was a long video. There was a lot of information in this video in regards to graphing. Uh, I promise all that information is going to be transferable to other parent functions later in this course. Uh, and then of course, tying all this to the equations and inequalities kind of tacked on a little bit more, but hopefully gained you uh, a deeper understanding of the equations and inequalities that we had previously spent time solving. Um, so if you found this video helpful, uh, please give the video a like to support the channel. If you have any comments or questions, as always, you can drop them down below. And I thank you for watching.